Okay, here's a little trick to correct the cupping. Obviously when you heat up that little chip of wood it tends to sort of cup because you're drying it out on one side. And I've just put a little slurry, just a sort of cap full of water on the face of that uh, maple plaque to encourage it to sort of flatten out after being heated up on one side and removed. Voila! A few drops of water, a few seconds with a hair dryer, she's sitting nice and flat and ready to reinstall. You can see the little bit of residue of that tape that still needs to be cleaned up. We'll clean that up with some naphtha. Now surprisingly, on this particular guitar, when I got that plaque off, there was no male fastener. Uh, I will put a male fastener in. I don't know if they're having problems maybe aligning it. Here's how I set up to do this job. This is the, the bolted on tenon and mortise. 90% uh, of this job is just calmly, methodically prepare and get ready. No guesswork. Uh, you need to be able to do it consistently with confidence and get it off nice and clean. I have my iPhone here where I set it for seven minutes. So seven minutes only, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll see the uh, rosewood start to sweat a little bit. We'll slip that uh, f fingerboard extension uh, to the sound hole first and then we'll see uh, if there's any play in that tenon and mortise. We may have to steam that to get it off. So here we go, showtime. Going to set that for seven minutes. I know that you've seen this in my other video, Acoustic Guitar Neck Reset, uh, but just kind of showing you it again. Same, same deal, same type of setup. I have this bullnose uh, probe that's sharpened to like a razor's edge. Now I like to have it round on the end, uh, and you can see in that other video, the Acoustic Guitar Neck Reset, that I gently slice no lumber, get that thing off right on the glue line. We are at the five minute mark. If you look closely, you'll see just some little beads of resin starting to sweat out of the fingerboard. That tells you that you're heating right through the wood, right down to the glue line. That's what we're after. So we got another minute and a half left to go. So this probe is actually heated as well. Not hot enough to burn the finish of the guitar, but hot enough to easily sink through the glue line. Cool enough that it doesn't mar the finish of the guitar top. Okay, the fingerboard lifted off beautifully right at the leading edge of the sound hole. We came up about two inches. Uh, by then it started to cool down. So now we're in on our second run of seven minutes. So the idea is here, you don't put it on for 14 minutes. It's seven minutes at a time. Get what you can and you come back for another run. You wouldn't want to grab that right now. It's pretty hot, but like again, not hot enough to scorch the top. Before we remove this tenon, I've masked off the leading edge of the back and just scored across the tip of the heel to give me an idea how much we're going to take off the face of the heel to get the correct neck to body angle for the ultimate action. Now we're all set up, just letting that uh, cappuccino machine kind of heat up, give us some steam. The fingerboard extension has been loosened. You see those two holes there that gave us access to the uh, the mortise, we're going to steam that mortise loose and then get the neck off and uh, let it dry out overnight and clean it up. The reason that that is tilted up like that is you want the water to flow to the intersection of the neck to body junction. You don't want it to go streaming down the back of the guitar. And I've got cloths wrapped around the head block inside. So that steam will get it off good and clean. Without we'll let that dry up overnight, have a look at it tomorrow. I might let it dry up a couple of days. The steam kind of you know, loads the wood up with quite a bit of moisture, right? So you usually give it a bit, a day or two, let it dry this out. That's what we ended up with on the top. So there's no lumber there. It's all, that's just glue residue. You do not want to bite into the wood here. Tape off the footprint so there's no chance of sort of going on to the, the finished part of the top. One of the things I want to point out about uh, handling this body, sort of holding it firmly while we clean up the residue of the glue. Uh, you don't want to alter that surface. I use a, a tongue depressor, double-sided tape, and some sandpaper on there. It actually flexes, right, and allows me to kind of roll off that adhesive uh, by sanding it lightly without actually biting into the wood surface. If you look closely here, you can see that the surface of the sides where that heel contacts the body is actually recessed a little like bit. Said, they've kind of taken that one out of, uh, out of Taylor's notebook. The heel itself is actually recessed a little bit into the thickness of the sides. 
Very clever. So what this does is it actually conceals the junction and uh, you get sort of that continuous mahogany stained finish uninterrupted. So I set up to adjust that inside of the heel where it contacts the body. If you remember earlier in the video I had scored uh, with the Japanese razor saw uh, that edge to and this will determine how much I'm going to take off that. Right, I've transferred that uh, serial number over to the face of the tenon because obviously I'm going to be sanding off uh, right at that tip of that serial number will disappear. Certainly in my book, whenever I'm doing any type of work like this, a neck reset or any type of repairs of this magnitude, I'm definitely thinking about the guy 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the road and uh, sort of making his job as easy as possible. It's just kind of a common courtesy that uh, uh, I like to extend to any other techs out there to doing this type of work. I'm skimming this uh, down to the mark that I had scored with that Japanese saw very gently. Skimming that down to the mark. So the amount that I've taken off will actually go from here, which is the max we're taking off, and that will follow this line along this ledge and along the other side it'll go to zero at this point and that will establish the proper neck angle just to clean up that last little bit on the ledge I use a conical burr for a good fit and we're in pretty good shape I'm going to do a dry run and uh, check this fit and see how that neck angle is before I switch over the last remnants of that Martin uh, neck reset I just wanted to show all the the guys out there that do have tech decks what I have there is a hardwood uh, strip that goes across the leading edge of the body platform uh, so that's my setup right the uh, hardwood 3 8 inch carriage bolt and then that piece of a hockey puck on the top here I have a tip cut out of a hockey puck that's got a 3 8 inch blind hole drilled in the bottom and that's what pushes up against the tip of the heel of the neck when I'm doing the reset. Uh, I put two flip lock clamps on either side of the fingerboard to secure the sides as I uh, steam and push down on that pressure point and it gets the neck off in, uh, in short order. This is one of those jobs that you know it's not a bad idea to have a buddy uh, to kind of you know work the neck out as you steam. Uh, I did decide to put a fastener in the neck even though there wasn't one there you could see earlier in the video. So this is a quarter twenty thread so I put the fastener in the drill got it spinning and then held it up against the disc sander so that I could reduce the diameter. I think that might have been part of the problem. The outside diameter of the head didn't fit into the recess that was cut in the head block that's covered by that little wooden plate. But anyway, once again, I opted to put the fastener back in. It helps to pull that tenon in tight uh, as the glue sets. This is my gluing setup for re-gluing this Martin neck on. That space between the rails of the tech deck allows me to slip a clamp underneath there. I do have a, a piece of hockey puck underneath there uh, between the clamp and the back itself. We'll let that set up and then we'll scoop up that extra glue and then we'll let it set overnight. I always prepare a bunch of tongue depressors, shape them like this and sharpen them on the end. Yeah. These are used for scooping up the glue. They're soft enough that they're not going to scrape the finish but you can actually sharpen them to like a knife edge and uh, scoop that up good and tight right to the fingerboard. I make up a bunch of them because after doing scoop up then I wrap uh, a couple of uh, tongue depressors in a damp cloth and then clean that right up super clean and there'll be no trace that this neck was ever removed. Right, the glue's all cleaned up and the top's polished and we'll just let that sit overnight. Neck has been reset, fingerboard extension re-glued. Well, in celebration of the Nashville Predators incredible run this year, the Stanley Cup final, I'm introducing you to the hockey puck pad that I use on the inside of that clamp and on the underside of this flip lock clamp I have a sliced up hockey puck so the finish on the back isn't marred by the clamp this is the clamping call 
that kind of goes on to hold that fingerboard well it glues. Uh, like most guitar techs I'm sort of big on the vernacular kind of using stuff that's readily available local hardware store uh, you know the tongue depressors I pick up by boxes of 500 at the local pharmacy hockey pucks as I mentioned earlier but I do have to give a shout out to John Brown at a Brown's Guitar Factory. This is where I got this needle uh, for my cappuccino machine that I use for steaming. Been using it for years. Great tool. Thanks John. Very innovative. Cheers. Here's a very simple trick for making up your own radius gauge. And I use the fret as my tracer. I'll sand that down on the sander. I'll match it against the crown of the fret. Then I know I've got a perfect radius to match my fingerboard. I will use the edge of this sander to cut my radius gauges because from the center to the outside edge, this is a 12 inch diameter, so from the center to the outside edge is a 6 inch diameter. So in other words, I can go down to as tight as a 6 inch radius on a fingerboard. I've just traced the radius off that Martin guitar. I'm going to sand down to the line for a perfect match. Now we've got a perfect match to that fingerboard radius on the crown of the fret. This is going to come in really handy when we go to true up that fingerboard at the neck to body junction and blend the neck set with the fingerboard extension. Now before we go any further, there's a few things I need to explain here. Take, think about this for a second. You've taken the neck off, you've tilted it back and then you've glued the, fin the fingerboard extension back down to where it was. So naturally what's going to happen is at that neck to body junction now you're going to have that sort of high spot because the neck has been tilted back it meets the body and then the fingerboard extension is glued down flat so this portion here should be blended and that's what we're going to do now we're going to blend that in with the rest of the fingerboard respecting the radius so what that results in is a perfect string trajectory along the crowns of the fret leading flawlessly to the bridge. Uh, so we're going to correct that. I'm going to walk you through it kind of step by step how I do this. This will be pretty revealing. Now I'm set up like this. I've taken out all the frets, order, jammed them into that piece of SM uh, foam to keep them in the right order. They're right there on the Tech Deck upper neck platform. I can snap them up and go. The back of the guitar is not flat. It actually has a parabolic curve like this as well as a spherical curve across the radius. Now the spherical curve has never been any issue for the tech deck because you've got the two rails and the space between the rails uh, will easily accommodate an arch top guitar or ovation guitar for that matter. But this parabolic curve, I've strapped the guitar down firmly. There's a piece of SM there that we just gently push into place. So now we've got the entire neck is supported, the entire body is supported, we all know that the fingerboard is not flat, it has a radius. Um, right. So we need to follow and respect that radius along the trajectory of the string path. I do not use a radius block, never have. I, do, I did make up that radius gauge uh, a minute ago and you'll see me sort of check as I go. The chalked area on the fingerboard, this is where we're going to blend the neck into the neck to body junction and extend it to the end of the fingerboard extension so we get that flawless trajectory. Okay, this block is a jointed block, dead flat, quite a bit thinner than the fingerboard. That's exactly what you want. There's a slip of leather on there, two-sided tape. There's some 120 grit sandpaper. That's what we're going to start with. Okay, I've got my radius gauge that I made up out of that tongue depressor. Perfect match to the fingerboard. And I've got this jointed block with a slip of leather on it. That leather automatically flexes and chases whatever radius you're sanding. I've had level one students, I've watched them do a compound radius refret flawlessly, no radius blocks. Watch this. So there's two things we're checking. We're getting rid of that hump at the neck to body junction. I've got my straight edge here and I'm basically scribbling a chalk line across the worst part. So at this point I've stepped it up. I'm using an 80 grit block 
and I'm concentrating right on that junction following the radius, the block, the leather is flexing to follow that radius effortlessly. I'll stop and check in a second. Okay, now I'm going back to my 180 grit, just following the trajectory of the string path nice and gently, working over that radius. I did not go out of my way to follow that radius. The block just naturally followed the radius, no issue at all. It's very important that the block is is considerably narrower than the surface of the fingerboard. The shape of the fingerboard, it's like the old style ice cream cones. They're wide at, at the end where you put the ice cream in and then they come to a point at the other end. So you, so you need to be able to follow that conical radius. And that's how quickly and effortlessly we do it with this setup. This rosewood dust, we're just going to gather that up. If we need to do any filling, We'll have the exact match to the fingerboard. One, two, three, four. Okay, here's a little trick I use. When I'm putting the original frets back in like this, I'll put a little tiny bit of wood glue on that string. We'll drop it into the slot like so. Obviously, the wood glue is not used to glue the frets in. That's not but what does happen, if either side of that slot is end grain. The wall of the slot sucks up that wood glue and it basically expands that little tiny bit and grabs the fret. I've also buffed the ends of the frets uh, before I reinstall just to make sure the fret's nice and smooth on the outside edge. I take black magic marker and mark the underside, the tang, so that's the base side of the fret. Just to guarantee that it goes in the exact same orientation that it came out. The glue swells that saw curve, gives you just a little bit more grab. Here we go, last fret. Normally, when I'm hammering in those last frets over the fingerboard extension, I would reach into the body and I'd put this lead weight, this lead puck, and hold it underneath the fingerboard extension so that you're not shocking the top. Now in this case, there's a huge block that goes underneath uh, to support the fingerboard on the inside of the body so there's no danger of, of cracking the top on either side of the uh, fingerboard when you gently tap those uh, frets in. That's it. Frets out, fingerboard corrected, perfect radius match, new frets in, we're good to go. This is how I hold the uh, body and neck actually in place, just gently the neck and the body are supported. I just wanted to kind of show you just how I set up to fill in those fret ends. And that's what we end up with once it's filled in French polish. Just get ready to put that little label back in place. I doubled up tongue compressors on either side of the center back strip and then laid the label flat and then just tipped it up and pressed it into We have the LR Bags element system. Love this system. This discreet little finger wheel adjustment hidden at the edge of the sound hole beautiful and the other thing I did there was some extraneous buzzing coming from these uh, these machine heads I did put a little slip of two-sided tape on the inside to pull them in tight and that seemed to take care of it so there we go mission accomplished